This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh God, our Father, we come before your holy presence today to present ourselves in another worship experience. Speak to and through us and help us be a blessing today to those who uh, entered this place for worship. Pray to meet every need, every desire, every expectation according to your will and your purpose for our lives. It is in the name of Jesus we ask. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. some praise and magnify him for he's worthy to be praised.
how excellent is our name in all the earth. We have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider that your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you have visited him, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Six verses of the said chapter of the uh, Psalms. Proud lead us now.
Our text today will come from the book of Genesis, the first chapter, verses 26 and 27. The A part of that uh, 26 verse. Then God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. 21st verse, 7th verse says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Speak from the subject today, it's much Father's Day. And not so much a Father's Day message, but just a message, general message for all of us. I am who the Bible says I am. I, I am who the Bible says I am. We were made in the image of the triune God with the ability to reason, create, and commune with our Creator. The psalmist said it best when he says, Know that the Lord, He is God, and He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are made and created the way God wanted us to be. Not so much of what we want to be. I know that a number of people are trying to do some alterations to that in created, but God has made us perfect the way we are. Uh, it is, he says, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. I don't care how you try to improve upon what God has created you to be, you're still what he made you to be. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pastor. As God's image barriers, we are symbols of himself in the world. When people see us, they see God's creation. When they see the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we behave, they see God's creation. That is why we are not to make uh, images of God because he has already done that with us. We are made in his image according to his likeness, which indicates physical similarities and not just spiritual resemblance. Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you have from God? I told you earlier in our, our message that we were created in the uh, uh, image and likeness of the triune God. So God placed his spirit in us. That's the spirit that leads us, guides us, speak to us, and make intercession for us when we need the Father. So he dwells in us, the body that house the Holy Spirit is a temple of God. God made created us the way he wanted us to be. So man, men and women are created to reflect the Trinity here on earth. As the Trinity is one, we were created to be one. Genesis 2, 7 said, And the Lord God from man of the dust 
of the ground. We are all made from the nothingness of the ground, which is dust. I think I said some time ago in the message at the church um, that no one go shopping for dust may go and and uh, and purchase uh topsoil and uh soil for your lawn topsoil for your plants but nobody goes to buy dust god made us the way he wanted us to be made so that none of us could claim our superiority over the other, not making anyone greater or better than the other. We are just dust. Not only were we made equally from dust, but we were made from uh, one blood. In the book of Acts 17, 26, 8, uh, says, uh, every nation of men who dwells on the face of the earth were made from, created from the same blood. Same dust, same blood, which make us equally the same. So we were all created uh, the way God created us, and that's who we are today. So I am who I am because the Bible says I am. I am man created by God in the image according to his likeness with all the ineligible rights as any other man on earth. We don't have to pick back seats. We don't have to uh, bow and bend to any man. <clears throat> Whatever God has made available to one is available to all. Not only did God create us in his own image and, uh, and according to his likeness, he created every man uh, to use whatever he has created <clears throat> for his lifetime here on earth. We will never run out of God's resources as long as we live. He made us in his image according to his likeness and then he blessed us with resources that will last us the duration of our lives. The psalmist says, the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything we see, in sight or even out of sight, God made it. Uh, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So whatever man discover, whatever man find hidden in each generation, God made it already. There's nowhere you can go to find anything in this life on, on planet Earth that God did not provide for us. He enlightened our minds, He enlightened our spirits, and lead us in the path of new discoveries. But it was already here. We are entitled and privileged to all that God has provided and made available to us. He knew everything we would need. He knew everything we would do and everything we would become before we were born. He knows all about us. He knows what we are going to do. He knows what we're thinking. He knows our behavior. He knows our character. He knows our spirits. God said to Jeremiah, 
Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. God wanted Jeremiah to know that 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 his his assignment was already given to him before he formed him in the womb. His assignment was already outlined when he got here. Isaiah says, uh, the Lord has called me from the womb. From the metric of my mother, he made mention of my name to be his servant. God, God, God knows us knows us better than we know ourselves. Even before we were born, he knew us. Of John the Baptist, he says, he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord thy God. It's so good, it's so good to know that even before we were born, yeah. God knows our behavior even in worship service. Yeah, yeah. He knows that, that, that he knows that he gives us, I think the hymn writer said, um, uh, uh, what he has given us, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Yeah. So all we have has come from him yeah. and if you never felt the Spirit of God in your life if you never had the pleasure of him uh, leading and moving and speaking to you uh, I would I would suggest that you find some quiet time somewhere and invite him to come into your life God has chosen and gifted many of us for ministry and greater works and greater service before we were born. So what we are doing now, it just didn't come to us because we had gone to school or because we learned certain uh, uh, vocations and we want to be involved in certain vocations and we like doing this and like doing that. Your calling was already uh, agended before you got here. Amen. And we must learn how to appreciate what God has done and is doing for us in our lives. He says, Jesus says in his teaching, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And your fruit should remain that wherever, whatever you ask my father, he is privileged to give it to you. He said he, he, he prepares us for the challenges that we will confront, that, we, that, that, that will confront us in our daily responsibilities. That is why the scripture says, he who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. You don't have to worry about the imps of the devil because God has us covered. He knows what's best for us. People will talk about you. People will say things about you. People will plan and plot your future for you. But God, God says, I got you covered. I'm greater than anything else you'll find on earth. Greater is he that is in my life than he that is in the world. I am who the Bible says I am. I'm a man who has been created in the image and the likeness of God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 
11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I am a blessed man. I do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I do not stand in the path of sinners. I do not sit in the seat of the scornful. But my delight is in the law of the Lord. I pray and meditate in his word day and night. I am, I am who the Bible says I am as a husband. I am, I am a believing and trusting husband. I trust my wife. I, 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 I believe in her. I support the thing she does. I, I, I support ideas and welcome ideas and I welcome her support in life. I am a husband that and believe in my wife. Bible says a husband is the head of the wife as also Christ is the head of the church. You know quite well when you don't feel well when you have a headache or migraine headache. Nothing else goes well with you. When the head is out of place, also the body is at rest. But what, what, what the, the, God is saying to us that as the head of the wife, then be the head. Don't be an abuser. Don't be an accuser. Don't be a fault finder. Just lead as the head supposed to do. The husband says, uh, loves his wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That is, the husband is to love his wife as much as God loved the church. You ought to love your wife enough to make any sacrifice that should be made for her comfort. You ought to love your wife at any degree that would make her feel comfortable in the presence of you as her husband. And you ought to love your wife as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself. No sacrifice is too great for that which is part of you. The church is part of Christ and the wife is part of a husband. So no sacrifice is too great for your wife. Husband, love your wife and do not be bitter towards her. There is nothing in this life worse than going through life, being bitter with the person who prepares your meal, the person you sleep with, the person that's part of your life. The scripture says don't be bitter with your wife. Whatever there is that will bring division in your marriage life, get it straight. Life is too short. People are living here daily. And they are leaving here and we have no idea when our name will be called on God's road. So, I am who I am. I am who the Bible says I am as a father. Father, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Do not be hard on them or harass them 
and make them feel inferior and frustrated do not break their spirits. Sometimes, sometimes listening to parents the way they talk to their children, I think they forget that they were a child once. I think they forget that they did similar or some may be worse. But don't try to make your child an angel overnight. Allow them to grow in the spirit of Christ by watching you, by you being kind, by you being uh, uh, sensible, that you're being uh, 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 even rational in your discipline. Don't discourage them. You want to encourage them. Even they may not do some of the things you think they should do. But encourage their hearts anyway. And they will become better. Beautiful had a uh, philosophy that perhaps they didn't understand, but it worked for them. They said you get more flies with honey than you do salt. So I'm saying that to us today, uh, 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 fathers, and this is a grand opportunity for you to work with your son, work with your daughters. The time in which we live now are critical. They are seeing certain things happen uh, in our society with our law enforcement, uh, in society how we have been denied and how we are underprivileged and how we have been mistreated. Teach them that they are to strive more, work harder, and become better qualified to take some of those places when people say you can't do, prove to them that you have a God in you that says you can. When people say you don't have the ability to do, show them that you serve a God who created you to soar as high as you want to in him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. There is no need for you to treat your child worse than you would treat a dog. Talk to them. Allow them to communicate with you. Allow them to say what they have to say. They may not have much to say, but that's your child. And you are teaching him or her each day. Do not exact them to resent, but train them and discipline them, counsel with them in love and in the spirit of the Lord. What if God would treat us the way we treat our children? We don't always act the way we should act. We don't always say the things that we should say. We're not always at the place we need to be. But, but, but he looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs and he blesses us in spite of who we are. I am, I am who the Bible says I am. I want to be all that he has created me to be. I want to do all that he has created me to do. I want to live my life that he has created for me to live. Speaking, speaking for all the fathers today, I hope they can agree with me in saying that we are committed and we are determined to be all that God has created us to be in his service. We want to spend time enduring the things 
that he has already called us to do and be. There are no shorts uh, or circuits and short stepping with him because he knew before you were born what we're capable of. And he already knows what we are going to do. And you don't have to tell anybody else what you're not going to do because God knows. And we must answer to him for the thing we neglect in this life that he has commissioned us to do. I think the hymn writer says it best today when he says, use me, Lord, in your service. Draw me nearer every day. I'll be willing to run all the way. And if I fall to while I'm trying, say, Lord, don't be angry. Yeah. Let me stand. Yeah. I'll be willing to run all the way. He said, wasted days are now behind me. I think Solomon says, we wasted so much time and when we get certain age in life, we look at our life inventory and we see so many wasted hour, hours, we see so many wasted days, we see so many wasted weeks, so many wasted months and wasted years. And, and some writer says, my wasted days are now behind me. My evening sun is second fast. Uh, and there are mountains in my life they are so hard to climb. But Lord, I promise, I promise, Lord, I promise, I don't know about anybody else, but Lord, I promise, I promise I'll keep climbing, I'll keep walking, I'll keep moving upward, the upward way, if you only let me in. I'm willing, Lord, to run all the way in his name, in his name. Trials sometimes, tribulation at times, heartaches sometimes, pain and struggles. But, Lord, I'll keep on in your service. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say what you want me to be. I'm willing, Lord, to press on in your name. I'm willing to run, even though tired sometimes, I'm willing. Although disappointed, I'm willing, willing to run all the way, all the way, striving to do his will every day. And there's someone here today who don't know him. Before you were born, the Lord knew what you were going to be. He didn't create you to serve the devil. He didn't create you to waste your time in trivial things. He didn't create you just to be an existing uh, 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 image here on earth. But he has a responsibility for you. You have, you have that opportunity today to say, Lord, here I am. I'm willing and I'm willing. Give me your heart, give me your mind, give me your heart, give me your soul, you'll see you through.
in the love of God, the peace of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each heart now, in forth, and for ever. All the saints of God set together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 